Look at this. At the bottom of it, it actually has food pairings. Food pairings, sharp cheddar and grilled beef. I love both of those things. Right now we're in St. Louis. I've been here a handful of times. I'm not ultra familiar with it, but uh, that's part of the fun. I think today we're gonna see how much we can get familiar with St. Louis. We have a show tomorrow. It's usually a good pregame to walk around, meet locals. It's actually kind of nice, because usually we fly in for these shows. We fly in, we do the show, and we fly back out. Drinking beer is a huge part of the tour for us. You have a lot of downtime. It's a lot of hurry up and wait. So hurry up and get to this venue, sound check, and then now you have eight hours before your show. What do you do? Let's go have a beer. You hang out, you talk to the people, and you just kind of have a good time. St. Louis just has such an actual history of beer. We love the beer culture here, so we're just like excited to learn it. If you grew up in St. Louis, you grew up on two things. Right, you grew up on AB, Budweiser, Bud Light, and you grew up on Cardinals baseball. Those are the two things that you grew up on as a St. Louisan. When we started the brewery, we thought it was gonna take 10 years to fill up the space. We've accomplished that goal in three and a half years. So when we started, we had the capacity to do about a thousand barrels of beer. Okay. And now we have the capacity to do 23,000 barrels of beer. Oh my God. Everybody here always knew that we had this great heritage and we knew we could make great beer here. And, and it just took people to, to have the guts to, to go out on a limb and, and make it happen in the, in the shadow of the big guy. Right. Not just like the St. Louis big guy, but the national big guy. Do you feel like it's a little bit more of an advantage, like you're pushing, like think people are thinking about it? Since it has been going on for 20 years yeah. here, it's easier. And so you have like smaller and smaller guys doing just what they want to do. For sure. They're not trying to like yeah. become the next AB. Right. They're just like, I can do this cool thing well. I'm just going to focus on that cool thing. And, and just be part of the party. Right now, everything's going really great within the local craft beer scene, too. Uh, and I almost like, it's beer, right? Craft beer, beer, like that's a whole discussion also. It's just really well-made beer. Speaking of well-made beer, I, I think that I think that you have just <laughs> I think that you have just rested far too long on this. So I'm gonna drink your beer now and you have my empty glass. That's fair. It was 2006, in the summer, in Las Vegas. We had rented a place to rehearse for our biggest headline tour that we'd done to date. The band was getting a little bit bigger, so we kind of needed someone to make sure that we were okay. First day of rehearsal, we pull up to the rehearsal spot and I see a bunch of these guys and I just think, holy shit, these guys look so scary. Hopefully one of them is our security guard. Sure enough, this motherfucker was. When he started telling jokes and like making fun of people right on the spot, I was like, I like this guy already. I can tell I'm gonna be friends with this guy. There it is. I was driving escorts through LA, quite literally putting my life on the line almost nightly. Yeah. A friend at the time, and he reached out and was just like, hey dude, I got this gig for you. These guys are small dudes, they need security. They, they're kind of blowing up. We are small dudes. And at the time it was funny because one of the escorts that I drove, she- Did she know our band? She knew your band. Yeah. And we just listened to the radio and she was like, oh my God, I love this band. And I was just like, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah they're great, right? <laughs> Yeah, I love them too. And I came on really thinking like, God, this is gonna fucking suck. Yeah. And met you guys in Vegas. Yeah. It, it was kind of that night. I was like, yeah, you know what? Yeah. I can do this. And I regret it every day. Every day I regret it. <laughs> Normally they'll pretty much take the cup from me in the morning. This grain is from the beer we brewed yesterday. And it's all protein pretty much at this point. We pulled all the sugars out during the beer making process. Urban farming is getting a big push in St. Louis. The city as a whole is trying to be more welcoming to younger people. After it gets done in the mash tun, which is when we're pulling sugars, it's pretty much useless to us at that point and it becomes chicken feed. This is way tastier than the dried grain. Oh my God. Yeah. Can you eat this? Yep. It doesn't taste like much because we've pulled all the sugars out. Just kind of straight. It's like plain oatmeal. Yeah, yeah. just oatmeal. It's like breakfast. <laughs> just, just trying to get my grains, in your guys. Pockets. Yeah. This is, at this point, called the sparge. So we're introducing water to the top 
of the mash. Mm -hmm. The mash is the grain bed, and this is the boil. The brewing community in St. Louis is super inclusive. Okay. Everybody is ready to help everybody out. But you do have to kind of make a market for yourself Absolutely. because there are so many options. Yeah. So we do weird and historical beers. This is the toasted ravioli beer. This is the one that we're adding tincture to of the Prevelle cheese, like which that. may be absolutely disgusting. Yeah. Oh wait, so we're like the guinea pigs. I don't yeah. know if I like this. I love this. He hates it, I love it. You have like kind of a weird expression when you're talking about it. So I am born and raised in St. Louis. I love Provel cheese. Okay. Everybody I meet that is not from here is like, what is this? It's like Vegemite. People yeah. from Australia yeah. love Vegemite kind and it's like actual that. pure yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah. It's like this pasteurized processed cheese blend of like cheddar, provolone, and mozzarella maybe. But then most Swiss. outsiders don't like. They the don't, but it's great. The idea was we were doing a beer that we tried to hit all the grain notes that you would get out of a toasted ravioli, and then we made a Provel-infused vodka, and I decanted some here. Dude, cheese vodka, that just sounds vodka. so crazy. It's my like, beer. Yeah. Um, this is Provel vodka. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Bottoms up, no? Oh, geez, all right. You know what? I'm not mad at him. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at him at all. Dude, it actually kind of like sweetens the vodka a little bit. It did. I like that. I made a ween themed beer once. That a was ween themed. A, it was chocolate and cheese. Oh my god! I did it as a home brewer, and I thought it was really funny. So we made it. We made a cheddar infused vodka and made a stout with it, and okay. it worked pretty well. The same way that you would with like cocktails or anything else, you can hit three or four different flavor markers in something and make it taste like something else entirely. Like So the chicken and waffles blonde ale that we have up there has some smoked paprika, which gives it kind of that smoky, savory quality you expect out of fried chicken. Yep. It's got a little bit of fenugreek, which smells like maple syrup, and then it's got the, the base of the beer is just a really bready, almost sourdough type uh, blonde ale. And so it's got that waffles component too. And so it has no chicken or waffles in it, but it hits enough of the, it hits enough of the sensory characteristics that it, that it runs through. When we first got signed, we got signed to Fueled by Ramen. We were like, holy shit, we're signed to an indie company. That's huge. Yeah. Like for us, that's massive to get out of Vegas and tour. We were ready to tour the US for a year, 10 years in a van. Like we didn't care. Oh uh, my God, could you imagine? Right, yeah. So I think um, that's kind of cool. Like talking to everybody at Earthbound, it felt like they would do this metaphorically in a van for however long they need to. They're making this thing happen just for people that, they, that know each other and they're kind of just like, learning each other as friends, and then also trying to build up this company together. In St. Louis, we're like, you have over 150 years of brew. The music world is so competitive. It's like, oh, I love you, but I'm gonna fucking crush you. Absolutely. And the beer world, it seems like, I love you, and let's make a beer together. And then the very last time you go, head for the mountains of Bush. Beer. <laughs> that's how the song goes. It goes forever, and everyone that's just not. Like, that's the best yes, it's, ending to a song. It's truly right. Beer. Yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> and then you drink, you cheers and drink. <laughs> how do you guys not know the song? This is the best how do ever, you? I'm not even from here. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> really? That's why you buy a hundred dollar piano, folks. <laughs> Trying to figure out, is this your bar? Because yes. we kind of came in here and just started making noise and having fun. Oh no, yeah, I love to make noise and have fun. This is, this is your place. Yeah. So that's why it felt right. Yeah, so when we moved down here, there was really not a whole lot down here at all. And it was a really cool community because everyone was just so weird that we all got along. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, and so when we opened this bar, it was awesome because like finally, um, this part of the neighborhood actually had a watering hole and a place to go. From then till now, all of a sudden you can walk to all sorts of bars, like we've got these guys across the street. The upstart that is St. Louis Craft Brew, the microbrew, the whole thing, it's very indie. And to have 40 plus breweries in a place where beer is just the common denominator for everybody, it's baseball and beer. There's two things, it's baseball and beer. So, so far since we've been here, we've just drank beer and met the sweetest people in the world. Yep. Yeah, and uh, that's St. Louis to me. So there's a tag, that's St. Louis to me. That's St. Louis to me. I like that, there we go. Oh my go. God, what are you, a musician? That's good. <laughs> Went downtown to grab a brew. I really just love hanging with you. Hanging with you. I'm down in St. Louis. What do we got, what do we got? Hanging with you. <laughs> There's a right? That's my, that's my. <laughs> Drink a couple beers, then we say cheers, then we just keep drinking till we fall down like tipping steers. 
steers, right? Is that kind of Chicken steers? Chicken steers. Oh, no, I don't think that's a thing. <laughs> that's not a thing that St. Louis thing. does. No, I don't think so. <laughs> that's not a thing that St. Louis does. No. <laughs> All right, you got to guide me. <laughs> <laughs>